Hello Internet! Today we're going to be taking a look at Bash's command prompt and specifically we're going to look at how to customize the prompt part of the command prompt or shell or terminal or whichever word you prefer. Uh, this is sort of the default in, in Debian or Ubuntu, uh, any, any other Debian vari variant. Uh, you, you're going to get this or, or some, something like this. Uh, and it's, so it's got your username, the system you're on, and then the current working directory, and then something to indicate like the start of your, your prompt. Uh, and that is all stored in this PS1 variable. Uh, and that looks like this. There's a lot of stuff going on here, uh, like this, for example, is actually what's coloring it blue. Uh, and this is coloring the working directory blue and determining a few other things. These are ASCII escape codes. They're how you would color things in, in most, most uh, command prompts. Uh, I believe all of them support it in, to, to some degree. Uh, it's been a little bit flaky in like command prompt, for example. Uh, but for, for most things, these will work and they'll change the color. Uh, and so that's doing like this green and the blue and getting us back to a normal shell uh, or normal white gray thing. Uh, and so we can set this to whatever we want. Uh, if I want to do like the most simple thing ever, I can do PS1 equals just this. And now that is our, our <laughs> new prompt. Uh, this is actually kind of confusing the first time you do this because it if you don't complete anything in a normal shell, it's going to do that symbol in the first place. Uh, but we can actually do like echo hello world now and, and we'll get that. Uh, so it's doing normal, normal prompt things. We just have a much shorter shell. Uh, so what I would like to do is kind of customize this a little bit so we get a little bit more information than this. Uh, and specifically, I'd like to work with the dollar sign question mark. Uh, result. And what that's going to do is return the previous command's response. Uh, so zero is the one we want. That means the previous command succeeded. Uh, in this case, hello world worked. Uh, but if we run, like said, uh, world of zero slash, that's probably not going to work very well. Uh, and so we should be able to echo that out and we'll get one, uh, which represents some sort of error. Anything that isn't zero is an error in this, in this world, I guess. Uh, and so what I want to do is when we get that, I want to have my prompt include a table flip. Oh, some of the characters aren't supported. Uh, but I wanted to output that at the start of my shell, just so I have a better idea of what's going on. Uh, depending on where you're running this, some of the characters may or may not work, but I thought this would be a fun way to kind of explore this. So we're going to try that. Uh, and, and hopefully it makes figuring out errors, or, or at least identifying that an error occurred, uh, a little bit easier and hopefully a little bit more fun. Uh, and so the way we can do that is we want to do this export command again. But we want something else to happen. Uh, you can run commands in this. Uh, so we can do uh, like pwd, for example, which is going to be the uh, current directory we're in. And if I do that, we now get my current directory and that. Uh, I'm not sure that that did what I want, though. So let's make a test and cd into the test. And if I do pwd again, we're in home runewake 2 test. Uh, but our shell is displaying home, runewake 2, and nothing else. Uh, so that's not quite right. What we can do is actually prevent that from executing by using single quotes. Uh, so double quotes are going to be executed. Uh, and so in this case, it, it looked at that string, ran this pwd command, and then stuck that back into the string and passed that in and set that to our PS1 value. Uh, that's not what we want. We want the actual command to be stored there so that when we run this, the command is what's actually called. Uh, so if we run this now, you can see our path actually updates and now we have the actual working directory correct uh, instead, instead of something that isn't actually what we wanted. Uh, just to kind of uh, show a different way, if we go back to that and echo out 
that PS1, our command isn't there, we actually get the prompt uh, that we would expect, uh, which is both confusing and also, yeah. <laughs> but this is sort of one of the things we can do. Uh, and so if we want this to stick around, to, to last, we can actually do and create a bash profile and just uh, forget how to use Vim because that's the first step. Uh, and, and then we're going to forget how to exit it. And then we're going to add an export PS1 equals something. Uh, let's just export that for now. Uh, and so that will be like our basic shell. Uh, this will now be applied every time you log in because it's your, it's your bash profile. Uh, so this is going to be loaded every time you start. Uh, it won't be loaded here. Like you notice it didn't, it didn't get updated. Uh, if you don't want to restart your shell, you can source files uh, that have specific things like that bash profile and that will cause it to update. Effectively what that's doing is running everything in that and uh, uh, loading it into your shell. So uh, we're running out of my knowledge on bash because I it's not something that I'm super I'm a big expert at but we're gonna we're gonna explore this a little bit more. What I want to do is go back into this bash profile and we're going to add a forgetting how to vim again wow uh we are going to add a function that is going to test if we failed or not and we're going to do this before the export because we actually want to use this inside of that uh, so we're going to call this our table flip and it's going to look something like that and so what this is going to do is if uh, we forget how to use bash. We're going to do our dollar question mark. We'll put that in quotes just because. And we'll say if that's equal to zero, uh, then, then uh, we want to do something else. Let's, apparently we're using four quotes or four spaces. There we go. Uh, so, <clears throat> then if it's equal to that, then we're just going to echo nothing. We're just going to give a blank string back. But otherwise, uh, else, that's in the weird spot. Anyway, else we are going to echo our table flip emoji. Uh, and so if you're not familiar, you can get to this menu that I'm using, using Windows period. On, uh, on Windows 10 after like the if, if you're more than a year out of date this won't work but if you're if you're even remotely in date anymore uh, this should work uh, and so you can just pick whichever one you want we're gonna go with the table flip because eh. <laughs> and then we should be good so let's go back here close out our uh, else statement and so this is going to run a really simple if check that is going to check what was the previous command's exit code. If it was zero, then re return zero or return nothing. Otherwise, give us a table flip. Uh, and then all we need to do is stop using our mouse because it's a terminal. <laughs> and we are going to run our table flip like that. Uh, and so we're just giving it the name of the uh, the function that we created and giving it our shell. Let's add a space there because otherwise wherever this ends, the next character is going to be what you start typing. So if we don't have a space there, you'll start typing immediately after that caret and it might be a little bit hard to tell what's going on. So we're just going to add a space there to make it a little bit nicer. Uh, and then we're going to remember how to quit Vim. Uh, not like that. There. Uh, so exit gets you back, uh, and then colon WQ, writes and quits. Uh, ho hopefully, uh, hopefully we're, we're not getting stuck in Vim. Uh, you should have Nano as well, but maybe that's a little bit easier. It has commands on the screen. Uh, so let's source that, and we should get the same thing. We have our space now, which is good, and we did not get any errors. Uh, so one of the things is that whatever you put in this prompt is obviously going to get run every time 
you try to display a shell. Uh, so if there are errors, you're going to see those a lot if it doesn't work. Um, and so probably doing what I'm doing and putting it in the bash profile may not be the best choice right, right off right away. Uh, because if this is broken, every time we restart our shell, it's going to be broken again. Uh, and <laughs> we don't necessarily want that. Whereas if it's in some other file and you're sourcing it manually while you're developing it, you're not going to be breaking your entire terminal every time you break something. Uh, for the most part, it's not that big of a deal. Like I can, I can show that at the end of the video, like if, you, if it breaks, it breaks, uh, but it should be fine. Uh, so we don't have any table flip, so that's good. That means at least that part of the if is working, or at least it's not running at all. Uh, so what we want to do is force an error. So let's go back to that said. It's further back than I remember. There we go. Uh, and now we get our table flip with our prompt, and everything is good. So we're at, everything's actually doing what we want. Uh, the table flip still has those missing characters, but that's probably just because uh, it's the font set of this. Uh, and I don't have any any supported uh, fonts, I guess, that have those have those symbols. So we're going to, yeah, I guess do that. Uh, let's break break this and just kind of see what happens. Uh, so let's say we. Uh, okay. Sorry, it hates when I, I use Vim wrong. Uh, let's delete part of that, and it should be broken now. So if we source this, uh, command not found. So this might be a, a, an interesting thing. Uh, I tried to source the bash from file, and the, the command wasn't found. Uh, and so now if I like echo hello, I imagine every single time it's going to fail, say zero command not found, because what it's trying to do is actually invoke uh, this. It's trying to run this, uh, and that's not found. And then we get another error, command not found. Uh, and that means we're always getting a failure because our actual script is failing. Uh, so we probably don't want that. Uh, and it's kind of annoying, but your shell isn't broken so much as just really clumsy and hard to use at this point. Um, but that's sort of, I guess the, that's not the right thing. Uh, that's sort of the intro, I guess, to how to do some of this stuff, uh, uh, modify your prompt and things. Uh, I found it personally really handy when working with say Git, for example. Uh, you, can use, you can modify this, modify your shell so that it shows how many files have been added or modified or deleted in your current change. Uh, that's been really handy as a way to kind of keep track of things when you're working in a shell, because otherwise there, there's no real easy way to do that. Or perhaps keeping track of jobs that you have running uh, or Docker containers you have running or things like that. There's a lot of ways you can kind of extend this because any command that you can run can be put into this as long as you want to. Uh, and as we showed here, you can kind of write your own script or you can write your own functions that can be plugged in as well. Uh, and then those can kind of use everything on your system. Uh, so you can kind of customize it fairly easily to whatever you want. Uh, and if you want it simple or more complicated, you can you can do either of those. There are some fancy, like fancier things uh, that I haven't covered in this. If you look at that original prompt that I was showing, we have there's some fancy things going on to show like a tilde instead of the full path when you're at your home directory, for example. Uh, and those are just quick little commands. Uh, you should look those up if you want to use them. There's a few of them. Uh, I'm not covering them here, and maybe we'll post a link if I can find one. Uh, but other than that, go for it. Have fun. <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully it's really fun. Uh, if you can get this to work, like there's a lot of cool things you can do. One thing that I have seen that's a little bit more useful than the table flip that I didn't do for this uh, is you can actually show like a uh, green or red light uh, for succeeded or failed for example uh, but I don't think that's supported in mine because I just get these uh, 
missing character symbols. So that's why we're not using emojis, but you can definitely use emojis in most, most prompts, uh, just not in this one. So yeah, I'll leave it here. That's pretty much everything I wanted to cover. If you have other questions or, or things that you think we should cover, uh, or you just want to have explored this and have some really cool like custom prompts that you want to share, maybe something that you've worked on, uh, either share the GitHub link or post it in the comments, and I'm sure people would love to check it out because I sure would. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So until next time, see you internet. <laughs>